What's going on everybody? Hope you're all having an amazing day. I'm James Salvatore and in today's video I have the 2020 Audi A8 Long Wheelbase Edition, the TFSI 60 to be particular. And in today's video, like always, I'm going to be sharing some facts you need to know about the car and then we're going to go off for a drive and see how it does. But before we get into it, be sure to help me out by destroying the like button for the YouTube algorithm and be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications so you're alerted when I post my future videos. On the channel, I typically do new car reviews, new car comparisons, classics, exotic cars. So if that's your thing, be sure to stick around. And with that said, cue the cinematics. On first impressions when looking at the A8, in person, you really just kind of take in how large this vehicle is, especially the long wheelbase edition. This is a very big car and it's beautiful and bold. I mean, between the beautiful crisp modern lines and the signature LED headlamps and tail lamps, this is such a distinct looking car. And although with the full size luxury sedan, performance usually isn't the first thing that you talk about, I still feel it's important to get out of the way because some of you may be curious. So with that said, underneath the hood, you'll find a four liter V8 producing 453 horsepower and 487 foot pounds of torque, made it to an eight speed torque converter transmission. And since this also is equipped with Audi's Quattro all wheel drive system, it means you'll get a zero to 60 time of just four and a half seconds, which is impressive. This car also has four wheel steering and Audi's predictive air suspension system, which is a $7,800 option. So I'll definitely be touching on that later on in the review when we're driving to discuss whether or not that's a worthwhile option because it is expensive. However, in a vehicle like this, it could be quite good. All right. Getting into the interior, first let's discuss tech in this car because there is a lot of it. On the center console here, you'll see that you have a dual screen setup here. Uh, the top one is 10.1 inches and it pretty much controls all your infotainment functions and settings of the vehicle here. You know, you can see you have Audi's stock uh, Connect user interface. It's their latest version. Very, very nice to use, very intuitive to use here. You could tell that they put a high-end processor in here because there's no lag in inputs here. You know, you could hit the home button. Uh, you'll see that you have various other functions like weather, news, uh, text options. However, most of you, if you have an iPhone or an Android, you'll be using Apple CarPlay. And on the bottom here, you'll notice that you have all your HVAC controls as well as a few side things like moving up and down your shade, your uh, dynamic select and uh, like traction control off. And down here, if you press this button right here, it's your Audi Sense button. And basically it lets you control the level of driver's assistance intervention you want. For the driver's information center, you have Audi's virtual cockpit, which is a 12.3 inch LCD display, which is honestly, in my opinion, one of the best in the business. Once again, Audi didn't cheap out on the processor here, so it feels really refined. I mean, when you click the buttons here, I mean, just take a look at how fluid those animations are. There's absolutely zero delay, which means, you know, as time goes on, it won't be like, say, like a 2014 Mercedes S-Class, where when you're going through it, you know, you see that lag, I mean, you could tell that they're future proofing this. It's not gonna feel old in a few years. You know, you hit the view button here, you have a few different modes here. You can view your map in full screen, uh, consumption settings, as well as, you know, say what song you're on. And one thing that I noticed that's pretty unique here is uh, even with CarPlay, you get the album cover in a lot of car, the integration really isn't too perfect there. So once again, another area where Audi's really refined in the whole tech segment there. All right, getting into the rear seat back here, right away, this feels like a special place to be. Although I don't have the executive package back here, which gives you the uh, reclining seats and the seat massagers in the rear, 
this still feels nice. I mean, you just have so much extra leg room in the back here. I mean, I'm a big guy and take a look at how much knee room I have. I mean, just look at that. I have plenty of space and if I were to put up the driver's seat even more, I'd have even more than that. But just because we don't have the rear seat executive package doesn't mean you don't get to control a few goodies. Say for instance, if you wanted to, from, from the door, you could control the rear shade. You could control the uh, panoramic roof shade as well as the front, which is pretty cool. And you can open the sunroof. So overall, I'd say sitting back here is still definitely a treat. And moving around to the trunk, of course, you have a large trunk here. You have 12.3 cubic inches of cargo space, which is pretty fair for the class. You have a nice wide opening here and you have the comfort access feature where say for instance, you have the key in your pocket, you wave your foot underneath the trunk, it'll open, or you could just open it directly under the emblem, which is nice. And if you want to walk away from the car and lock it, all you have to do is hit the lock button and it'll lock all the doors and close the trunk as well. But you know what, enough talking about this vehicle, let's go out for a drive. First impression of this thing is, it's just very refined. It's, it's super quiet in here. Uh, I find myself having to actually lower my voice so it doesn't sound like I'm shouting because it's that quiet in here. Uh, they did a great job at sound insulation. How smooth this active suspension is. It kind of reminds me a bit of Mercedes uh, magic body control. I mean, you, you notice it as soon as you get in the car. Everything is just super gradual. I mean, you hit the gas in this car and it stays level. So it's not like lifting up the front end, you know, making it kind of like a dramatic pull off, you know, which makes you kind of feel like this car is slower than it actually is because you're not getting that, uh, because you're not getting all that movement in the body when you hit the gas. Let's see how the start stop does though, because that usually bothers me in a lot of cars. Wow, very smooth. And the heads up display is really nice and clear and easy to read. And it's just, you know, you put this thing in, in comfort plus mode, which I've never heard of comfort plus. Usually it's just comfort, which kind of cracks me up. And uh, the car just, it's so graceful. It wafts. It's a true luxury car experience. It's not like, oh, it's, it's you know, you put it in comfort mode and it kind of, you know, softens up a little bit. No, there is a drastic difference between the dynamic mode and the comfort mode. I mean, all the modes are comfortable considering, you know, like it's not like, you know, the car stiffens up like a sports car or something, but uh, there's a noticeable difference for sure. And when you put your foot in it, it just goes. It's not a very dramatic experience. Their power delivery is extremely smooth, which I particularly like because this is the A8. It's not supposed to be, you know, some, some performance monster where you hear the exhaust and everything. That's not the point of this car. Give it a little, little something, something. Very, very smooth. Very, very smooth. Just such an effortless takeoff. But we're gonna switch out of dynamic mode now because the point of this car isn't to be a sports car. So we're gonna drive it as it's intended to be driven. Just such a smooth ride. And you know what, one nice thing too is you click the button in the side of the seat and then you get the seat massage functions pop up on the screen in the center here and you have a few different modes to pick from. You have what's called stretch shoulder, uh, wave circular. You have a few different options there and you can control the intensity of it. And it's actually good. I mean, some massagers in cars, you know, it's kind of like a gimmick. You barely feel they're there when they're on and you're just like, oh, well, what's, what's the point of this? This, you could feel it's there. It's like, it's like actually doing something. If you're looking at the 7 Series or the S-Class, I definitely recommend you try one of these two because it brings something different to the table. I like that it has this cool modern feel and I'll be very interested to see how the new generation S-Class stacks up to it now that the new generation S-Class is a little bit more modern on the inside, a little bit more techy, kind of like the Audi. It'll be interesting to see how this car compares with that. But for now, if you're looking for the, the ultra modern, sleek, luxurious design, I mean, this is it. It really is. Well, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and that it helped you in making your purchase decision. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to help me out by smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm because it really helps. And be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you're alerted when I post my future content. Before we go though, I'd like to say a huge thanks to my friends down at Audi of Fairfield, Connecticut for making this review possible. They're an awesome, super helpful, friendly group of people to work with. And 
They have a lot of models in their inventory. So if you're in the market for a new Audi, be sure to contact them. I'm gonna leave their information in the description below so that you could do so. And with that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you next video.